Have you ever fallen in love with someone, but then don't even realize how you fell in love with that person to begin with? That is one of the main themes of Kardo Kyokai Movie 6 Oblivion Recording. So, it's been quite a while since I have sat down and reviewed this series. Now, <sighs> there has been quite a bit of recommendations to continue on and review this series. And no worries, I'm here. I didn't drop this series. It just, this is a type of series that I watch on my free time just to sit back and see a psychological series with some great themes that really get your mind working. And I tell you, these type of movies really make my brain just go into overdrive because there's just so many things you need to look into when you are watching a movie. It requires multiple rewatches just to even understand some of the main themes of this movie series. And that is kind of why it takes me so long to sit down and review Kara no Kyokai. Even though I love the series, I'm a big fan of Type Moon, I'm a big fan of Fate, it still takes a long time to review this because movie reviews are quite different from series reviews or even in of itself episode reviews or chapter reviews because movie reviews is a story that has a plot a condensed plot or a plot that is there for us as the viewer to be satisfied from start to finish and it should have its own story and that's kind of what movie six does so enough of the little bit of backstory on why this review is so late because I know I'm going to get it for movie 7, let's talk about it. So, this movie, movie 6, Oblivion Recording, is more of a character instead of plot driven story. That is the first thing I just want to say right now. I, I know from the comments I read on movie 5, a bunch of achievements told me that movie 6 is probably one of the worst movies of Karno Kyokai. And personally, I don't... 100% feel the same. I actually believe this is one of the better films. It's not the best. I don't think there's going to be a film that's going to reach the status of movie 5, Paradox Spiral, in the Kara no Kyokai series, but I don't necessarily say that this movie is bad. There's reasons why I could see why there would be watchers that would disapprove of this movie, because there is a lot of things that make you go, what, or scratch your head, and there is some things that really need more explanations. And I, I'm hoping that movie 7 and the epilogue and then the Recall of Summer will clarify a lot of these questions. I hope so. So that is what I was really looking at when I was watching this movie. Because I do know this is a movie series. And there's some things that do need to take some time to actually explain. I do know Kyara no Kyokai is a confusing series that really makes you have to think. And to truly enjoy this series, you have to watch it over and over again just to really get the grasp of what it's really about. And that's really the only way to appreciate the writing and the plot and the characters of this series. And I feel like it's likewise for this movie. Out of all the movies though, I think of Karno Kyokai, I think this is the most simplistic. As I said, a character driven movie. It's not really plot. The plot is very straightforward actually, which is quite jarring. Because if you go from movie 5 of uh, Paradox Spiral that even to this day, I I've watched that movie already three times now, and I, I still don't understand it completely. It's just that damn deep. And this movie is more straightforward. It's jarring if you go from something like that to something like this, because you you, you were used to the big mind fuck that was movie five, and then you come into this, and you're like, so a new female character is introduced, uh, a sister of our main male character. And she has, like, this brother complex. You have this straightforward murder mystery. And a bunch of people looking at it would be like, this is very different from what I've come to expect from the past couple movies of Karnio Kyokai. And that's to be expected. I, I think this was, like, an interlude to give us some downtime for some character development. And I, I personally think we did need some good character development for these other characters. Even Shiki got a little bit of development in this. And getting to see the relationship of how Shiki and Asuka worked together and how they worked off each other's personalities throughout this movie was surprising. You would think a character that's like Shiki that's very, I guess, distant from majority or she doesn't really express her emotions a lot 
would be that compatible with someone like Asuka that has a brother complex. I, I didn't think I would see something like that. And it showcases a different side we haven't really seen of Shiki. And I felt like that was quite entertaining because out of all the characters we have seen, Shiki seems to only care about our MC, Mikia. And to see how she cares for Mikia's little sister and actually looks at her as if she's a little sister was surprising and I enjoyed that little twist in this movie it was a really different perspective this movie is obviously Asuka's story that's obvious what this movie is it's Asuka's story and majority of the movies we have seen from Chrono Kyoka for the past five movies they've all been kind of centered around Shiki and her character the mystic eyes the plot paradox spiral with you know how humans try to find the origin different things like that some very tough subjects that when it comes to the tight moon verse and this story tells a story of a murder mystery with a girl trying to figure out how this person died in class 1-4-A. She tries to figure out how this person died, the mystery behind it, and comes to the conclusion at the end and manages to get back at the murderer and the person that was using fairies. Now, from what we have seen from the quality of Karno Kukai, for instance, the past like three movies, movie 3, 4, and 5, this obviously is probably not the best when it comes to the terms of the expl explanation of the plot because there's much left to be desired when it comes to some of the characters, especially when it comes to Sasaki, the God's Word character. Now, he's very cool. I like the character design. He reminds me a lot of the teacher from Fate Stay Night. I don't know if remember the teacher that manhandled Saber. He reminds me a lot of that. And I do know Karno Kokai uses character designs from Fate. I, I, I do know that they're related, so don't, you know, don't worry. I'm just saying, I do know that a lot of the character designs in this series is kind of like proto-designs, like prototype designs of Fate Stay Night. And it's obvious when you get a good look at some of these characters in this movie, like, getting to see Asuka as a child looked straight up like Rin. She, she looked just like Rin, and some of her personalities do remind me a lot of Rin, especially with how she acted with her brother, to just, you know, the way she acted in the past, to how she acted towards Sh Shiki in this movie, it's just she, she looks a lot like Rin, and acts a lot like Rin, she's not exactly Rin, but she acts a lot like her, and from the previous quality of the movie, though, like I said, there's much to be desired, especially with Sasuke, because we didn't really get a good explanation on some things, like, we didn't really find out the true reason why... I think. I, I probably need to rewatch it a couple times to get the full grasp. But we didn't really get the full exact extent of why he killed those people. And also his God's word. We never really got the full explanation of that. And I would like it if that got more explained in the near future. Hopefully movie 7 clears this up because there is some things that just is much to be desired. Now, one thing though. The fairies in this. From what I assumed as a viewer, as, you know, watching Karno Kyokai, as you know, I, I haven't seen the visual novel or light novels, whatever Karno Kyokai is based off of, I haven't read it, and I'm just strictly anime only when it comes to the Type Moon franchise. From what I saw, it made me assume that the teacher, Hideo, I think that's his name, Hideo got killed by Oji, you know, the purple-haired girl in this movie. It, it was easy to assume she killed this person over an argument, a discussion. But when it showed the fairies in form, which was very beautiful, by the way. The fairies were very beautiful. Production value of this movie, I think, is one of the best when it comes to the movies I've seen so far, actually. The production value in that fighting scene at the end with Asuka, one of the best, definitely. But it's not just that, though. The argument that we saw through the fairies that had OG and then the teacher Hideo arguing with for what it made me assume I, I don't know if I'm correct or not because like I said there's some things that are not properly explained to anime only from what I can see it made me assume that the teacher Hideo he became some form of fairy or familiar because the nature of the fairies weren't really explained actually for what I assume the fairies were some form of familiar or something like that close to it the way OG was using them in this, but then they took on a life of their own and started attacking 
at the end and was going to kill Oji at the end of the movie. So there, there are some things that need to be clarified. There really is. And I think I need to actually see the original source probably to understand the full grasp of what this is about. But it, it made me assume that the teacher got turned into a fairy or some form of familiar. Because when you saw his face pop up and the essence when the familiars were arguing in the movie, the way she said with certain dialogue, like she has to make these through different sacrifices or different things and since the different shapes of the fairies are like different types of animal creatures like they some look like lizards some look like you know bugs and then the dude's shape turned into like a human face and made me assume that she turned that dude into some form of fairy or i guess a familiar one or the other i could be wrong though because like i said anime only but that was my interpretation of this, just looking at it my first time around. I've only watched the movie once, by the way, so I want to clarify that right now. And I have to say, regardless of its issues, like with certain things that didn't really click, like some of the movies. Like I said, th I, this is coming from a person that kind of understood some of the main themes of Paradox Spiral. Not all of them, of course. I, I, just too much to even begin to grasp all. But I understood a lot of those themes. And it just, it makes me feel like there's some things or building blocks or puzzle pieces that are missing out of this movie. Like, there's some details that are just, like, completely plucked out or X'd out from the writing. And I've heard that the director of this movie was rather new. I heard whoever handled this movie was new to Karno Kyokai or Type Moon or Afotable when they were animating things. And so this, this director wasn't that experienced so that might be part of the cause but there might be other things going down into that might be controversial topics i have no idea because Colonel kyokai does have some controversial themes especially the last you know movie to movie three there's some pretty creepy stuff and so it might be because of that i'm assuming it might be but we might not ever know now, besides the presentation and the plot and the conclusion, the characters overall for the most part, Asuka, I felt myself liking her quite a bit. She was a really good character in this movie. I really enjoyed. She, even though she was the main spotlight, I'm not annoyed by that. I, you'd think when you got the spotlight of Shiki through majority of the movie series from, you know, the past five movies, you'd be quite upset to see a change of perspective. Like, you'd be very upset to see a new character take the spotlight. You'd think you'd be quite upset about that, but I'm not. I actually like seeing a new perspective from a different angle of the movie, seeing it from, you know, Mikia's sister's perspective, how she looks at the world and, you know, her reason for why she fell in love or has a brother complex for her brother, along with, you know, her relationship to Shiki. It's a very enjo enjoyable atmosphere to the movie. It really was. I mean, this movie is more lighthearted and comedy based and I guess unserious compared to some of the movies. I think this is the less serious movie out of all of them. And that's not bad. It's not a bad thing. Overall, though, a very enjoyable movie that gave me a lot of entertainment. Production value on point. Like I said earlier, it's probably the best production value I've seen out of the movies. It was wow. <laughs> Just like the CGI. I think that was the best usage of CGI I think I've ever seen. That, that was like the pinnacle of CGI I think I've seen as an anime. That, that was crazy, some of the CGI in this movie. So yeah, as always, it's been very fun watching this. I will try to get to movie 7, and if I misunderstood some things, which is very obvious when it comes to the Type Moon franchise with, you know, these type of series, obviously I will not understand everything unless I see the original source and rewatch it a couple times if i'm mistaken in anything please let me know in the comments below and if i am correct and i'm on the dot please also let me know i'm just very curious about that because i will rewatch this movie series once again I, I i plan on doing that and giving another analysis once i have finished it and then rewatch it again to see the real themes and concepts of it that i missed the first time around i plan on doing that so don't worry about that but yeah I love y'all. It's been fun. I will try to get out the Movie 7 review as soon as possible. Here, here, here's the thing. I'll make, I'll make a bet with you, okay? I'll make a bet with you, Chivas, right now. I'll make a bet. 24 hours after upload of this video, if we hit 450 likes, I will review Movie 7 as soon as possible, probably by this week. Now, you know what? I will by this week. I will do it by this week, Monday at the latest. I promise you that. That is a promise. So, anyways, you all have a wonderful day or not, wherever you live. Please be safe. 
Chibi out.